Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from AnthonyMorganti.com. This is episode 22 of the video series where I critique and process your image. In this episode, we're taking a look at this image from Deborah. It's a really cool shot of the northern lights. We've got a nice tent there, and I think we're going to have a lot of fun processing this image. Now, as far as the composition itself, I like it. We have the aurora borealis over towards the left. We have the tent a little more towards the right, so there's some separation between the two. You don't want them overlapping. You usually, if you have two kind of main elements, two or more main elements in an image, you typically don't want them to overlap usually. So very nicely done. Now, one thing, as you look at the image, the tent is crooked, but is the tent crooked because the camera's crooked? Or is it because it's on a soft slope? There's really not any visual clue in this image to tell me that it's definitely a slope. So it's hard to tell. So there's some creative choices you can make here. Let's assume this is a soft slope. You could leave it exactly like it is because that's the way that scene is. That's really a soft slope and you could take the picture exactly like this. The problem you have with that though is that a lot of people that look at it because there's no visual clue in the image to let them know that that actually is a soft slope, they're just going to think the image is crooked and it's not going to look balanced to them. It tends to affect the balance of the image. And balance is kind of an esoteric term. It's hard to put your thumb on it, what it really means. It just basically means visually pleasing when they look at it. So, because there's no strong visual clue in the image to let me know for sure that it is a slope, what you could do is when you take the image, let's say it is a soft slope, just make your camera slightly crooked. So you tilt the, low, the left end a little lower than the right end and make sure that the in the viewfinder the tent is perfectly straight. Then you maximize every pixel in the image and you have this great image with the star field. The third thing you could do is you could take it exactly like this and you could straighten it in post. When you do that, you're cropping away some of the sky. And the sky is really cool, and we really don't want to crop it. So I think preferably, this is the artistic decision you have to make. Either leave it, you're going to take it exactly like this and show that soft slope, or you're going to take it with your camera slightly crooked so the camera looks, or the scene looks straight, the ground looks flat, and the tent is going straight up and down. That's the preferable way for me. I'd prefer that the tent be straight. You might differ, and that's fine. Uh, it's it's not objective. It's it's a subjective decision. Now, because I'm presented with this image to me, uh, with the tent being slightly you know slanted towards this left, I'm going to straighten it in post and lose some stars. That's not preferable to me, but that's the way I think it would look better. And I think I could tighten up the image too so that the tent and the northern lights are in such a point in the frame that will maximize the composition. So just wanted to talk about that. You know, if there's not a, lot, a strong visual clue about whether something is level or not, you might have a problem with it. With someone who looks at it, it might not look balanced to them. Now, as far as the camera settings, I think they're perfect. Whenever you're photographing the sky and you have stars and you want the stars to be points of light the wider your lens the easier it is to achieve those points of light now she used a 20 millimeter lens and on her camera which i think is a i think it was a canon 1d mark 3 or something like that which i believe is a crop sensor camera um 20 millimeter worked well though As you could see the the stars are points of light if she used a 50 millimeter lens I, and 30 seconds, I suspect that those points of light would have been streaked slightly because you're at 50 millimeter angle of view. Uh, so the wider you are, the longer of a shutter speed you could use. In this case, everything was perfect. The exposure is perfect. 30 seconds f a 2.8. Typically, when you shoot these types of shots, you need a fast lens and you're going to shoot it wide open. So f a 2.8 ISO 1600 beautiful. I think it's a perfect, perfect composition. Now what I'm going to do as far as processing it is I'm going to process it two different ways. One way completely in Lightroom for those of you that only use Lightroom. And then one way like I probably would do it if it were my image. So 
we're going to start out, I'm going to create a virtual copy. I'm just going to right click on the thumbnail and go up to create virtual copy. This first, first virtual copy I will process completely in Lightroom. Along the way, I'm going to create a second virtual copy, and then that second virtual copy, after I'm done with the Lightroom version, I will process that completely, you know, to, to finish with the plugins I use. Now, to start out processing this image, we're just going to go to Lens Corrections right away and do those. We're going to go up to the Basic panel. Now, what you might find, those that shoot night shots like this that include like Aurora Borealis, um, the um, Milky Way, stuff like that with the stars and even star trails, they'll set their white balance in camera to tungsten. It's very common, almost actually just about every photographer I know that kind of specializes in this type of photography will do that. They'll set the white balance to tungsten in camera. Now, if you shoot raw, it's no big deal. You could do it in post. But if you shoot JPEGs, you're going to be screwed because it's going to burn it into the JPEG, whatever you shot it at. And you won't be able to easily <clears throat> switch it later. So what I suggest you do is shoot raw. Then in post, you could just go up here and put tungsten white balance. <clears throat> Excuse me. So to me, that, that looks a lot more natural. And I think it's a really strong, strong shot. Looking like that looks nice. So with that now, at this point, I'm just going to do the basic panel processing and tone curve processing like I normally would. Usually at this point, though, I would crop it. But I'm going to hold off on the crop because, as I mentioned, I'm going to create another virtual copy. We're going to send that over to a plug-in for noise, that second virtual copy. I found that the noise plugins, no matter which one you use, seem to work better if you send an uncropped image to them, meaning all the pixels are there. And it does a better job of eliminating the noise on those images. Then you crop it later. So I'm going to crop this in a minute. I'm just going to, you'll see when we get there. But right now I'm going to process it as though, um, you know, I normally would. So I'm going to go to highlights. I see we have this kind of big glow in the tent. I want to get a little detail in there. So I'm just going to eyeball there and bring highlights down to a point where I think the detail looks good, but I'm not losing the northern lights that much, that they'll still look nice up there. Then I'm going to open shadows up and I'm just going to eyeball the images. I open shadows up till I like it. Apparently, I like shadows all the way up on this image. I'm going to add just a touch of vibrance, not much. I'm not going to do any saturation at all. We're going to come back and do clarity in a minute. We're going to do tone curve now. I'm going to look at medium contrast. Those of you that haven't watched my videos, I prefer to add contrast using the tone curve, specifically the point curve, as opposed to the region curve or parametric curve, they call that. But we'll try strong contrast. Definitely like medium contrast a little better. I'm going to go back up to the basic panel. I'm going to quit, get a quick white point by holding in the shift key and double clicking on the word whites. And a quick black point similarly. So far it looks good. Looks good. I don't know. Do I want it like darker or do I want to add a little exposure to it? I think just a tiny bit of exposure looks nice. So 0 0.15. So we're just going to add that touch of exposure. So at this point, I'm I did the basic panel. I usually don't do clarity at all if I'm using plugins. So at this point, I would send it to a plugin. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a second virtual copy. And this copy two, we're going to send to plugins. But I'm going to finish copy one in Lightroom. And what we're going to do now is I'm going to crop it. So I'm going to open the crop tool. Now, I want the tent level, so I'm going to straighten it first. So I'm just going to eyeball it. I'm going to come off the image. I get that double arrow. I'm going to click the left mouse button, and I get this grid. And this grid helps me make it straight. So I'd say right about there is fairly straight. Now, I have the crop overlay set to rule of thirds. And I think that will work well with this. I'd like to have the tent around this point of intersection and the Aurora Borealis around this point of intersection. Now, unfortunately, to do that, I'm probably going to have to crop out quite a bit of that sky. That's why I think it would be preferable is when, the, when you shoot the image 
is if that is a slope, I don't know. If that is a slope, I mean, some of the, it looks fairly straight the way it is. I mean, some trees are leaning all over the place. But um, if it is a slope, just make your camera slightly crooked so the tent is straight up and down. Now, uh, what we're going to do is I think we'll just pull in over here. We'll move it around. I don't know. try to bring in as much as it, of that sky as I can. I like that. Now the tent is pretty much over here on this rule of thirds uh, inter point of intersection and the aurora borealis is pretty close to this one. So we'll go with that. I'm going to hit enter. Okay. So I think that's a stronger, tighter composition. We have more, it appears to give you more separation between the two main elements of the image. We have soft framing going on. We have a tree over here and a tree over here kind of framing everything. And I think it's a, a very nice, nicely composed image when I crop it this way. So I'm going to jump over here now and I'm going to add some clarity to the image. I think I'll add quite a bit. I like that right around 30. Might come back and readjust some things later. We'll see. We'll go to detail now. And we're going to deal with some noise. Now, it is a dark image. It is high ISO, so we have some noise. Uh, it's, it's to be expected. Let's just like put noise reduction on 60. It pretty much got rid of the noise. Let's go down to 50. A tiny bit of noise. So we're going to split the difference. We'll go to 55. That looks good. We're going to zoom back out. Now, there's nothing really highly detailed in here. Nothing that I really have to worry about making this super sharp. Uh, so I, I'm just going to, I mean, the default sharpening was at 35. That's probably good. We'll just bring it around 40. I mean, that really, I can't see visually any difference, even if it was at 40 or if it was at 150. I mean, does it really matter? So, like I said, it doesn't matter too much. We'll leave it at 40. Now, next thing I would do is a vignette. Now, I was asked... Typically, when I do a vignette, I only put a dark vignette. I, I never put white vignettes that I remember, at least. And if I do do a dark vignette, I don't, I'm not very heavy-handed with it. It's a relatively light vignette when it's a dark vignette. But why do I always use highlight priority? Well, that's because the vignette I use is usually so light, it doesn't matter. But I will show you the difference of these three. If you do here, there's if you click on that drop down, there's three here: highlight priority, color priority, and paint overlay. And we'll just put a real heavy dark vignette on right now. And if we go to color priority, it's going to be slightly lighter. If we go to paint overlay, it'll be considerably lighter. Okay, so you know, to me, they're all very similar. So since I put such a light vignette on my images, it really doesn't matter. Now this image to me doesn't really need a vignette. I mean, it's a relatively dark image already. We have natural framing by the dark tree on the left, dark tree on the right. So we have that kind of natural frame going on there. Um, but maybe just to touch, just to darken the corners a little bit. So minus 11. So our Lightroom image is done. So now we're gonna go over to this image. And this is where I want to reduce noise. Now, remember, I did all the processing. I didn't crop it, and I didn't do clarity adjustment to this one. And this is when, you know, at this point, I want to reduce noise. So my uh, noise software I like to use is Topaz Denoise. So we're going to go down to um, Edit In, down to Topaz Denoise 6. Now, because it's a virtual copy, and even if it was the raw file, we're going to have to create a copy with Lightroom adjustments. So we'll do that. Once that's created and we come back, I'm going to delete that virtual copy number two because we don't need it. Okay, it was a Canon EOS 1D Mark III, and I don't see that here, and which happens a lot. So anyways, I try to just try to pick something I think might work. So 7D Mark I. Let's just see what 1600 does there. And you can see there is, when I click down, there's a lot of noise. When I let go of the left mouse button, it's still a tiny bit of noise. But a lot of times that's because in detail recovery, you, the add grain slider is pushed to the right. A lot of times if you add grain to the image, a slight, really fine grain, it gives the illusion that the image is, is sharper than it actually is. 
I usually, I always actually take that all the way to zero. And you can see it's noise is obliterated. So we're going to click OK. So what we'll do now, when this is done, and we're in Lightroom. I'm going to delete that virtual copy number two because we don't need that anymore. So we're going to have the three versions of the image. The original image, totally unprocessed, the original RAW file. Then that virtual copy one, which is completely processed in Lightroom. I'm going to take the crop from that one and copy it to this one. So we have the exact same crop. And then I'll finish off the image in um, on one effects 10, I think blinks a couple times as the metadata gets caught up. All right, now this is our noise reduced image. This was the the second virtual copy I made, copy two, and I don't need that one anymore. So I'm just going to delete that. And I think we'll rearrange these. This is my noise reduced image. Move that to the end. So the first one is our raw file totally untouched. The second one is our Lightroom processed image, completely processed in Lightroom. And now this one has the noise reduced in it, but that was it. Now I'm going to copy the crop from this one to this one. So click on that one, the first one that you want to copy the crop from. And I'm going to hold the command key in and select the second one. So they're both selected. If you had a PC, it's control. We're going to click sync. And I already have it picked here if these you could check none and just I just want the crop done so I'm going to click synchronize okay so now it's synchronized so there's the original there's the Lightroom processed image and there is the image that we just reduced noise in now normally what I'll do from this point is I'll just send it directly to the program that I want to finish it off in. And in this case, it's going to be um, on one effects 10. So I'm going to go down to edit in and down to on one effects 10. And I'm going to edit a copy because I cropped it. If I don't edit a copy and I edit the original, we're going to get the, un the image over there that's not going to, it's not going to be cropped. So we're going to edit a copy with Lightroom adjustments. And it's going to open up in on one effects 10 it's going to ask me if I want to do a smart photo or a normal photo smart photo means I could come back in here and edit it any of the filters I add to this I could come in and edit them later if you do a normal photo it's smaller but you won't be able to edit those images or those filters later so I'm just going to do a no, normal photo it doesn't I'm not going to come back in here and edit this and we're going to go to add filter and the main filter I use a lot on landscape images is dynamic contrast and you can see it just adds a little bit of punch to the image and then I'm going to go to a vignette and I like the subtle vignette that it defaulted to I think we'll just go with that and I say I'm done here so I'm going to click apply and we're going to end up back in in Lightroom now I do have this image. I'm going to get rid of that. So I'm removing that. I'll delete it from the disk. All right. Let's organize these. Here's our original image. No processing done at all. There's our image. Only processed in Lightroom. Beginning to finish. Then here's the image that was done in Lightroom. Sent to Topaz Denoise for noise and then sent one to on one uh, effects and we did that dynamic contrast um, filter which I think you know brought out a little more detail in the sky and a light vignette and if we want to see them all we'll just do this there's the original there's the Lightroom only and there is the one that was done in Lightroom Topaz Denoise on one effects. So there's all three. So, you know, that's it. A couple tips. I think the main thing I want you to take away from this is if you're shooting night images, a specific or particularly images that have the night sky in them, you might want to use tungsten white balance. I think it looks more natural and looks better. And if you're using plugins, I mentioned this in previous episode, a plugin for noise, you'd like to send the entire image with all the pixels there. Don't crop it, then send it to it. 
send it to it, get the noise reduced, then crop it later. It seems to perform better if you do that. So those are the couple main things I want you to take away from this. Um, also, I guess, uh, you know, if, if it's a, a gentle slope landscape with something in there that's not giving you a visual clue whether or not that's really a slope or the picture's crooked, you really have to make a decision how you want to go about photographing that. All right, thank you, Deborah, very much for sharing your image with us. It was a really cool image. I really enjoyed processing this. And thank you, everyone that watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.